Hi, it's Sven Hosford again, and I am talking today with uh, Dr. Zida Chaudhry. Uh, she's a faculty here at, on the faculty here at St. Clair, and the founder of Z Harmony, which is an extension of St. Clair here in Delmont. And you're a, an assistant professor at a medical college, mm -hmm. and what we're going to talk about today is the importance of nutrition and how food plays such a pivotal role in not just health, but mental health as well. When we talk about nutrition, it is a very common term. And every doctor, every physician, everybody would be talking about nutrition. Take your vitamins, eat this, eat leafy vegetables, everything. With that said, actually, I think it's very important to understand the concept of what this food is doing to your body. What role it is playing in your body system, including the building up of your immune system. For example, if you take vitamins, now, if we talk to our patients, the details of vitamins, which they are, how they are effective for our living, I think the compliance will increase. The vitamins work at a cellular level, vitamins work at molecular level. And if you see the cellular level, it is very important that all the things which we eat, building up our immune system, immune system free radicals, which are things which your DNA is damaging and you are getting all these free radicals which are damaging to your body, are uh, treated by taking these vitamins. And when you take in the pill form, it is not that effective as compared to when you're taking the fresh vegetable form, plant-based things. These are very active and they are very efficient for absorption and converting them to, the, to what you, your body requires. For example, if your body requires to get rid of these radicals, these are very good. They will go and they will, it's a whole science, how they go, how they give these, uh, mm, uh, they hit the free radicals and either they take rid of them or they add certain electrons to them so that they stabilize these free radicals which are so much damaging to your health. Can we talk a little bit about what exactly are free radicals? We hear that term a lot. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, the free radicals is if you see, if you see at the cell level, the smallest non-living is atom and the cell is the living, smallest unit which is effective, uh, perform all the functions of your body. Now atom is usually stabilized, for example, if you see oxygen. Oxygen has the ring of electrons around it and every atom has ring of electrons around it outer shell for example it is filled with electrons and they are in even number when any atom loses its electron and becomes an odd number that becomes a free radical when you see the term free radical it does not mean that they are always playing a damaging role they are normal break is going on oxygen will donate an electron, become a free radical, and then very quickly it takes an electron and becomes stable. So the, the process is very The process normal. is very normal going on. Then here comes a role in which the free radical does not get an electron and continue to be a free radical. Okay. Now, how does, how does the cell, how does it become a free radical? What causes that process to happen? When there is an oxidation and reduction reactions, then it comes to a lot of ed uh, education which you need to teach to people to understand what are these So reactions. there are certain foods There are certain that... chemical reactions which okay. we are going on. Now when you stay with the free radicals and how certain food, for example, if you are eating good vitamins, what they do, they do not, they donate these electrons to these free radicals and they become stable. So it's important to know what causes too many free radicals, but also exactly. what are the things that will help eliminate the free radicals. For example, ultraviolet rays, they can produce these free radicals in your body. And then if your body's immune system is good, with all these healthy diets, what are they doing? You are trying to maintain these functions of free radicals and also the enzyme system, which is very effective mm -hmm. for repairing these damages. Mm -hmm. But when we are deficient in these uh, substance, when we are deficient in our nutrients, how we can expect that our body healing mechanism will be taken care of? And that is the role which nutrition is playing. Actually, if you see, even at the molecular level, all of proteins are what? They are enzymes. 
what is it is coming from proteins if you are damaging your system of proteins how you think your healing capacity of the body will be functional so everything what i see and whatever i have read is going in your body and functional whatever you are eating and that is making the core of all the substance which your body needs for healing i think that's such an important point that the only raw materials that your body can use to heal itself is the food or the drinks that you put into it and, and oxygen exactly and that's all there is exactly now we can we can add lots of extra uh, supplements and vitamins and things but if we don't have a good foundational base to begin with that's really just throwing good money after bad isn't it exactly because as i said absorption through the food is much faster much effective than if you're taking a pill and it's in the right balance and it's in the right balance so let's talk about the importance of a balanced diet what what does a balanced diet mean okay there is a concept about like people are vegetarian people are taking a lot of veg vegetable plant-based foods and i agree with them the plant-based food are very very good for your nutrition but if you're a normal healthy adult the balanced diet includes proteins which are uh, animal proteins also and in animal proteins the best ones are the white meat the white meat like chicken and then you can have turkey you can have a uh, fish again the problem here in the united states is not actually the white meat or a fish or a meat itself it is how much you take it is the portion and if you see in studies shows that average American person takes two, three times more than the portion which is required for the meat. Now, if you have diseases, that's a different thing. For example, there are certain diseases in which you cannot eat meat. It's good for you not to eat those kind of a proteins, high proteins. There are certain things which you have to eliminate from your diet. But as a healthy adult, you can eat but in good proportion including the vegetables including the meat and what kind of meat that is very important now, i understand that like uh, an eight ounce steak in america we would consider that a meal for one person but in many countries of the world that is split up for the entire family exactly yeah exactly because see the portion sizes are becoming they used to be serving dishes right. now they are your dinner plates <laughs> Well, let's talk about the role of enzymes. This is another word we hear a lot about. And it, I think it's, it, well, you tell me, it's so critical to how your food is digested. Let's talk about that a little bit. How do we get enzymes? Where do they come from? And how important are they? So enzymes are actually is a huge topic. Let me put you, give you a small uh, uh, details. Enzymes, what are enzymes? They're all proteins. So the better proteins we have in the body, the better functioning of the enzymes is. So enzymes in your body are speeding up the reaction. Okay. They are speeding up your metabolism reactions, everything which is going on in your body. Now, I'll give you an example of an enzyme, which is on the, for example, you have a DNA. In your cell, you have a cell, you have a nucleus. In the nucleus, you have a DNA, which is your gene. That is very crucial. That is the, that is the control, control center, which is giving all the dictation which proteins are you producing, what is deficient in your body, which it dictates what to make. Now, when these things are damaged, for example, if there is a nick in the DNA, day-to-day -day living, we have a lot of nicks and tears in the DNA. Hmm. If we are healthy, if we have a good enzyme system, these enzymes come and then they stitch those DNAs, they repair them. If we are lacking our immune system, if we are lacking those enzyme systems, if we are immune or what you call it suppressed, you have a nick in the DNA and then another nick. Now, whilst we are sitting, there are a lot of things going on in the DNA, but it repairs itself, right? And even in a normal healthy person. Then comes to the cancerous cell, how it happens. These things, once it start, they are not repaired. And they continue to produce. Again, the free radical are continue to produce. Nicks are uh, not taken care of, then there is a, a completely different reading, what you call it, frame shift mutations are taking place in the DNA and certain other mutations which are not able to be taken care of because of all these enzyme systems which are responsible for doing those things. So what you will end up, and that is what actually is a very serious thing which we need to to actually educate ourselves and be aware of it and then educate our patients. 
So that's that's what you teach here for the, the clients here at St. Clair is all of what we just talked about. St. Clair, yes, during the retreats, uh, I'm more into education and more into like, for example, upcoming retreat is coming up on this uh, Saturday, which is 20th, I believe. Mm -hmm. And my topic is nutrition and immunity. It is not just saying that what is nutrition, but what is the role of nutrition in your body and in your building up of your immunity system. Well, it's, it's wonderful that you're doing that and also doing it in the context of this is for your mental health, not just right. your body's health. Right. Because mind-body goes together. And if you see the studies now, it is, uh, its research is stating that uh, many of the things which are related to psychiatric illness have to do with, with the food. And yeah. we have to learn more about it, and we have to be more vigilant about it, and we have to see how we can convey these messages to the larger set of the community. And that's a perfect thing for a topic for our next talk, the next time we get together. Exactly. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thanks.